So it all comes to this, handing over that final website design project to your client, making sure everything is just perfect so that it can go live and moving it to your client's account, setting up your domain name so that everything is hooked into Webflow and clicking publish on the actual domain name. You see, the way you hand over your web designing projects can make a big difference. You want this to be as smooth as possible and as straightforward as possible. And that's why I have created a list that I'm using on every single project that I do when it comes to website designing to ensure that I can go live without having any issues on my website. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can start to use it right away. So if you're interested, stay tuned. What's going on guys? My name is Lipolo Perella and I am a marketing designer and one of the things I've been working on is trying to make my this website design and web development processes a lot simpler but also something that anyone can follow. And if you have been watching any of my videos, you know I am a fan of having lists that I can use throughout any project, something that I can follow, something that I can share with a client in case they ask for about a process. And one of the processes that I have found out that takes up sometimes even the longest part of any website design project is that handover process. It's a process where you, know, you do some quality assurance to your website, you make sure everything is there, but there's always a thing or two that you might miss. And making sure that these websites are fully SEO friendly, making sure that they are um, performing as fast as possible, making sure that all your CMS collections have the very, um, or the only fields that you actually need to have this website project, and also accessibility for your website is key. And whenever you are going to submit a website, you want this website to be one of the best ones out there so that you know Google can rank this website so that your clients who are going to be editing this website can also edit it without any problem. And most importantly, the end user of the website can go through, can use the website without any problems or it taking too long to load or not even being able to find them on the web. So let's dive into my computer so we can start to see how this list works and I will walk you through all the different steps within the list. So now that we're inside of my computer, um, I just wanna give you a quick brief of how I was able to break this down into different categories, just to make it easier for me, a bit more digestible. And also if I were to give this to someone who is probably working with me, um, I also want that person to be able to follow this without feeling overwhelmed with a very long list. So overall, I have about six main categories and these six categories are go from design and layout, which is the first one. Uh, I have functionality and performance of the website and I have SEO, which is always a really big one. And I will tell you more as we get into, into um, details. And then I also have my CMS and filtering throughout the website. And then one of the other ones that sometimes is left out is accessibility of the website making sure that anyone can use these websites that we are creating. And then you will see, I just have last category here named others. And this is sort of where we do everything related to Webflow settings, domains, and all that. So let's dive in into each of these categories so that we can understand them further. So the very first thing that we are going to do to do a proper QA is to make sure that the website design is matching the website that we have developed. And most likely, I'm not too sure how you approach your design work, but for me, everything starts either in Figma or Adobe XD. And even if I'm doing some work for a client who is just development, they will most likely share with me an Adobe XD file. Now, not all the time, someone will share with you an Adobe XD or Figma file, with the desktop version and the mobile version. So sometimes what happens is that the mobile version of the website is sort of a guess of what it should look like. So if you do have a mobile version, you will also have to double check that your mobile version looks just like the Adobe XD file that you're working with. And here we are just going to be looking to make sure that there is no left to right scroll, that the website is flowing properly from, you know, from the top of the website to the bottom of the website. If we do have any interactions, any animations on the website, we want to make sure that these interactions, everything is flowing smoothly. There is no weird movements on elements on the website. We want to make sure that we have consistent font sizes that, you know, once you expand the website, um, it, the fonts adapt to the, to the different screens that you're working with also on mobile. We want to make sure that, um, as I said before, 
all our interactions need to flow smoothly and there might be chances where you might have an interaction on desktop but you might not want to have that interaction on mobile just to make sure that that mobile experience is a lot better. And if you're using client first, for example, to build your Webflow website, there are a couple things that come in within their templates or the framework that you might want to make sure that you don't have on your website before you hand it over to a client. And then the last thing that we want to check is we want to make sure that this website is uh, working on every browser that most people are going to use. So that will be Chrome, Firefox, um, I, no one uses Internet Explorer anymore, so if anyone ever asks you about that, um, just make sure you can probably say that you do not support um, Internet Explorer. But overall, just want to make sure that on all the popular browsers, your website is working. And then also you want to make sure that in all the different mobile versions of a website, it will also work. And there are a couple of cool things that you can do here to make it even easier for your clients if you're using the uh, FinSuite um, extension on your browser, you can rearrange the, the way you have the colors on the website, remove any classes or anything like that that you won't need on the website, and just make sure you have everything that your clients will need. You will also may want to, re, um, to design your 404 page, to design any password protected page, just to make sure that this have consistent brand or a consistent look through all your projects. So here is a quick rule that you should be using if you're going to be building a website. Anything that it's like a logo or um, vector graphics, make sure those images come in as SVG images. If you're doing anything that's like photos or imagery like that, make sure that you save them in Photoshop as for the web and then bring them over to tiny PNG to sort of compress them a little bit more because the heavier your images are or the larger they are, the more it will take for your website to load. So you want to make sure that all the images within your website um, are have been compressed properly and if those are like logos or vectors make sure they are all SVG files. And a few extra things here we want to make sure that if we did add some JavaScript to the website like custom functionality we want to make sure that all that JavaScript is within the footer of the page and we want to make sure that any functionality that we have added to the website is actually working. So, so things like if you go to your blog post and you want them to be able to filter through different um, blog post categories and you use something like the FinSuite attributes to be able to create this or you use FinSuite attributes to be able to um, be able to filter up long lists and whatnot, you want to make sure that all these filters and all these features are working before you go ahead and push it public. And the next big thing we have here is SEO. And the, the thing about SEO with Webflow is that there's a lot you can actually do with Webflow when it comes to SEO. I know there's a lot of people who say like WordPress is better for SEO when it comes to, you know, the way you can build a website and whatnot, but I'm going to be creating a video series on how you can go from SEO from a complete beginner to sort of like advanced SEO techniques that you can implement within Webflow because it allows you to build custom code. But for SEO, we have quite a long checklist. We want to make sure, you know, all the meta titles are there, all the meta descriptions are there, but there are also a couple of things that Webflow doesn't add automatically to your website. So you want to make sure that all this is there. And then one of the ways you can test this out is that you can go ahead and sign up for something like sitechecker.com where you can drop your website and it will actually give you all the errors that you might have on your website. And then to get a bit more advanced into this, we're also going to be checking for a schema markup. Um, we can add this for frequently asked questions, to blog posts, to different lists on the website. And all this will do is help you to rank that website a lot better. We will also be working on our sitemaps, making sure all the sitemap and the URL structure is done properly especially if you went from WordPress to Webflow. This is something that you may really want to pay attention to. We are going to be adding Google Analytics, adding the website to Search Console. Just the tags right now, you don't need to do much about it, but just add like all the different tags that you need so that at the end of the day, you don't uh, have to look around for them. Any um, 301 redirects, you're gonna want to do that just to make sure that all the pages are redirecting and you don't have any dead pages on your website. Then we head over to our CMS and in the CMS, we're going to be looking at all the different CMS collections that we have created. We want to make sure that um, we have the only the fields that the client is going to need, but also within these fields, we want to make sure that we have clear instructions on how to use them. There's nothing worse than putting a name for a field and then no one having no one being able to figure out what this field is used for. And 
if you're getting a bit more advanced with CMS collections inside of Webflow, you know you can filter them, um, you can go ahead and create pages with CMS items and then be able to apply filters and whatnot. But once you make sure that everything is working, you want to make sure that you are using these fields that you have created. So you may want to go over into some of your CMS items to make sure that all the fields are being used. And if there's any field that you find is not useful, just go ahead and remove them. And within your CMS, you will have CMS pages. And within this CMS pages, you want to make sure that you also apply a lot of your SEO um, tasks from the checklist because this will allow you to better rank this CMS collection pages. And then the next thing that we want to do is look for accessibility throughout the website. I know sometimes we go crazy with design and we add bright colors and con high contrast and whatnot, but sometimes this is not very useful for the end user. So Webflow does have some tools that allow you to sort of measure that. But also if you are on Windows, and you click F12 and then you run a lighthouse um, report, it will tell you sort of like where your website stands when it comes to accessibility. And the next thing that we sort of want to make sure that we have here is that whenever we have a link or a menu item or an image or um, a link that's gonna take the user somewhere, um, we want to make sure that we add a title attribute letting the user know what this link is for. So whenever they hover over the link or they hover over a button, it will give them a description of what it is intended to do or what it is or where they are going next. So now we have covered the basics of you know everything that we need to do. Now we need to go over into Webflow, go to our settings. We need to make sure that we have our favicon. We need to make sure we have our web clip ready in case someone saves the website in their phone uh, main screens. We want to make sure that we are already having the hosting plan. Which sometimes I would recommend that you have your hosting plan purchased before so that you can have all your CMS collections added to um, Webflow without any problems. Of course, if you're not using Webflow, then you don't have to worry about this. And then we want to set up our domain. We want to give whoever is in charge of the domains. We want to give them the DNS records that we are going to be needing to be linked into the um, domain. Sometimes, um, depending on who you're working with, you might have to send this to their CTO, um, or it can be just something that you do yourself. And once we set up the domain, we want to go ahead and test over Google Analytics, make sure that the website is getting traffic and the code from Google Analytics is being read. We want to make sure that we have all of our third parties um, tools added to the website. We want to make sure that um, any integration, extra integrations that you may need for your clients to be, for them to be able to do something are there. And once I have done this, all I have to do is click publish on the real domain. So make sure everything else has been checked before you do this. And then I take over that website again and I run it on site checker for one last round of revision where I'm going to see any little tweaks or any errors that I might be getting. There are a couple other things here on the SEO part that um, when I do the SEO series, I will dive into a bit more. Um, so that you can understand them better. But once you do that, it's really just to train your clients on how to use the website, what it is that they need to do when they are working to add in, let's say a new CMS item, a new blog post, a new team member to their team. So if you want to use this list for your own, um, there are two things I'll recommend. One is to go ahead and download it. Um, it is a Notion file, so you can just make a copy of it or duplicate it. But the second one is to make this list your own. So one of the things I have done is that there are a lot of things here that I have learned from courses I did on Webflow, but I have been able to customize this list to fit my needs and to fit what I've been what I have been seeing on projects as I'm wrapping them up. So for example, a lot of the SEO stuff, this might not be something you get on a usual basis on any course out there, but it has been something that I know that needs to be done throughout the project. So I've been able to add it here. So at the end of the day, always do what works for you. And if you found the content in this video helpful, make sure to subscribe, share, and leave a comment with any questions you have. And I will see you again in the next video.